Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. New at noon, authorities in Grand Forks are warning the public about a man considered sexually dangerous who is moving within the city. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreyer. 33-year-old Kelly Tanner is now living at 18 and a half North Washington Street. He is convicted of gross assault. Some of his cases involved boys and girls all under the age of 13. High-risk offenders are considered the most likely to recommit a disturbing crime. Also new at noon, it was a startling wake-up call for some people in several northern Minnesota counties when they were sent an evacuation alert from emergency services. People in northern counties, including Itasca and St. Louis, woke up to find this on their phones around 8 o'clock this morning. It tells people to evacuate the area right now. Itasca County says this was a mistake and was sent out because of a glitch in a system. If you have questions about this, you're urged to call the county emergency manager. We have that number in this story online or on the VNL News app. Taking that live look outside this afternoon, another sunny blue sky kind of a day. But you want the hat and gloves for sure. For what we can expect for the rest of our forecast, let's head on over to Storm Team meteorologist Lisa Green. That's right, we have blue skies in just about every corner of the Red River Valley. We're looking at the Brooks area here on a DOT cam in Minnesota and the Halstead area back over to Verona and of course back in Fargo as well. Every one of those DOT cams showing some blue sky and we'll continue that here as we work our way into the afternoon. Temperatures are into the teens and 20s, milder than yesterday. It's 23 degrees in Fargo, 21 in Grand Forks, the warm spot Benigi at 28 degrees right now now. However, with that uh, warm up comes some stronger wind and we're seeing a gust to 30 right now in Gwinter out of the south or southwest. It is warming us up, but factor that into your wind chill here as you're planning your uh, any any plans to be outdoors. You're going to want to make sure you're bundling up. So here's a look at our forecast for the rest of the day today. Expect temperatures to be into the 20s for the afternoon hours. Lots of sun, uh, some wind. You can see our sky cam. Uh, they're shaking just a little bit. And then tonight we start to see some hints at clouds and that'll be the first sign of our next chance for snow. More on that coming up. Look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. Bad weather this summer and fall has prompted Minnesota's governor to declare a disaster declaration for multiple counties in the area. The counties included are Beltrami, Kitson, Polk, Clearwater, Marshall, Nobles, and Yellow Medicine. They will now be eligible to apply for assistance from the USDA to help pay for impacts to agriculture. A North Dakota sheriff is taking his drunken driving citation to court. Mercer County Sheriff Dean Danzizen pleaded not guilty to driving under the influence after he was pulled over in Bismarck on January 24th. He blew a .19, more than twice the legal limit. He has been the sheriff for more than 17 years. A Minnesota police officer is accused of sexually touching girls while hugging them. 40-year-old Adam Pelton is charged with seven counts of criminal sexual conduct in connection with alleged incidents at a Cottage Grove High School where he was a school resource officer. Pelton is suspected of initiating hugs with students and then touching their lower backsides over their clothing. He denies any inappropriate touching. Drivers on one of the metro's busiest roads face an unexpected detour this morning after a cement truck rolled over near the interstate interchange. The truck was traveling from northbound I-29 onto westbound I-94 and then rolled at the exit. That exit was closed for a while as crews worked to clear the scene. The cement truck was the only vehicle involved in the accident and the extent of any injuries aren't known at this time. A Minnesota man is dead after being hit by a pickup while standing near a stalled vehicle. The state patrol says it happened around 9 o'clock last night in Itasca County. Troopers say the victim was on Highway 46 when he was hit and killed by an oncoming vehicle. The victim was a 45-year-old man from Squaw Lake, Minnesota. The state patrol plans to release more information later today. More than 24 hours after the caucus chaos in Iowa, we are starting to get a better sense of how that contest is shaping up. The numbers are not complete, but the initial figures show two candidates, Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders, vying for first place. Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden round out the top four. Peter Alexander has that story. 
With the Democratic candidates already crisscrossing New Hampshire, the final tally in Iowa is still up in the air. The uncertainty and confusion preventing any of the candidates from claiming an all-important victory. Still, Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders, neck and neck for first place, are touting the early results. A campaign that some said should have no business even making this attempt has taken its place at the front of this race. We received more votes on the first and second round than any other candidate. After technical issues with a new mobile app derailed reporting the final figures from those caucuses Monday night, the head of Iowa's Democratic Party acknowledging the system breakdown was unacceptable. As chair of the party, I apologize deeply while vouching for the accuracy of the results. The one thing I will say is that uh, the underlying data, the raw data, is secure. The chaos reigniting questions about Iowa's outsized influence in the presidential process. Elizabeth Warren challenging the decision to release partial results. We ought to get it together and release all of the data. Joe Biden appearing to shrug off an apparent fourth place finish in Iowa looking for a boost in New Hampshire. I'd like you to rocket me out of here to make sure this thing works, okay? Because if I come out of here well, you guys are going to set the tone for the whole, whole rest of the race. The murky mess potentially offering an opening for Mike Bloomberg, the former New York City mayor, aides tell NBC News, will double his advertising spending in other key states. With eyes on Super Tuesday, less than a month away. The president and his Republican allies have seized on the debacle in Iowa. But overnight, the head of the DNC weighed in, saying, quote, As frustrating as the last 24 hours have been, let us not lose sight of our ultimate goal to defeat Donald Trump, end quote.